Hey guys, my name is James F. Williams and today I'm going to be teaching you about a series of different basic apparatus that you really need to understand practical biology. When you come into a lab there can appear to be a lot of apparatus that's very confusing and you don't know how to use it properly so I'm going to try and break it down and show you the most basic things so that you can understand it a little bit better and be able to get into practicals a lot easier. And believe it or not, contrary to what most people think, a lot of the actual apparatus is quite simple to use once you get the hang of it, including things like micro pipettes, which look really complicated, but they get really easy to use really fast. Micro pipettes and micro pipetting is one of the most fundamental parts of biochemistry is how we measure things at very small quantities on the on the microliter level. They can come in a variety of different sizes from down to two microliters all the way up to a thousand microliters or one milliliter. And believe it or not, they're relatively simple when it comes down to it. They consist of a grip, which is the blue bit that you can see, plunger, which is the white part on the top, a tip, so part of the end which actually does the movement of liquid and the release so to release your tip when you're done with it. So to actually use a micro pipette it's relatively simple. The first thing that you want to do is adjust the dial on the front by using either the cogs or the plunger uh, on some newer editions to change the indicator to the volume that you want. You need to make sure you're using the right micro pipette otherwise you're going to get inaccurate measurements and by that what I mean is the number on the top Divide that by 10 and that's how low in microliters you can go to. For example, a P1000 will go to 100 microliters up to 1000 microliters. A really good example of that is right here with a P20. It goes down to 2 microliters and all the way up to 20 microliters. So once you've adjusted to the accurate volume, for example, I've got 460 microliters on this P1000, you need to put an accurate tip onto the end, otherwise you're going to end up damaging the pet. As far as the tip goes, depending on the size of the pet, you're going to want to use a different size of tip. For example, for the P20, you've got the tiny little ones in the red box. For the P200, the yellow box here, it's sort of a mediumish size. And for the P1000, you've got the big blue one here. They tend to come sealed with a little bit of tape because they're sterilized and that way you can use them with uh, genetics and 101 other things. So a little bit of advice as far as putting the tip on the end of your pipette goes is try and do it at a little bit of an angle so you don't jam the tip back into the box and try and close the box after you've taken out your tip. That way everything just stays sterile and you know you're going to get a better result. So once you've done that, the next step is just simply to push the plunger down on the top and that just forces the air out the end of the pipette. After that, you just insert the tip into the liquid, slowly release on the plunger to pull up the liquid again, and you'll pull the liquid into the tip of the pipette. Then you just take it into another vessel and push the plunger down slowly and to make sure you get all of the air out. When you're pulling the water up, make sure you do it nice and slowly, otherwise you'll get air bubbles. And the same for pushing it down. You don't want to force air into the liquid and then you're going to get liquid stuck in the tip and that's just, that's going to lead to inaccurate measurements and you have to do it again. So when you're done using your tip, you just take it into the little used tip pot that you have and push down on the white release trigger that you have here. And then you've got rid of the tip and you can use a new tip for your new measurement. The love of God, always use a tip. You have to use a tip, otherwise you will end up screwing up a pipette. These things are really expensive and if you don't believe me, just Google it because they really are and they're, you know, getting old in their old age and we want to try and save them for as long as possible. Pipettes are expensive and there's no need to break them just because you don't understand how to use a pipette. The University of Nottingham actually made a series of really good videos on this, so I'm going to leave a insert image thing here above my shoulder because the power of video editing and if you're on mobile there'll be a link in the description as well it's about 17 minutes long so it's really long but it's really good at the same time I've, I've told you how to do this a little bit but they go into like everything so just watch that video it's worth your time So the second major piece of equipment that you're probably going to use in a laboratory is a centrifuge. All a centrifuge does is it spins solutions in these little clear Eppendorf tubes at very high RPMs, rotations per minute, to condense down the material in the tube into a little dot. Now as far as setting up a centrifuge goes, it's really simple. So first off, you get your solutions in your little Eppendorf tubes and you're going to put them into the centrifuge. Following that, 
you put the top cover onto the centrifuge and then you turn it on. It is really as simple as that. There's a couple things that you need to make sure that you do so that you don't end up breaking the centrifuge. But first off is always make sure that you balance the centrifuge. And what I mean by balancing the centrifuge is that if you have something in one slot, you need to have something in the exact mirror of that slot with some sort of weight in it. So the easiest way to do that is take the number that you've put your Eppendorf tube in, half the total number of spaces and add that to your original one and you'll be able to put it directly opposite. If you have 24 spaces in your centrifuge and you put something in space one, 24 divided by two is 12, one plus 12 equals 13. If you put one in a number higher than 12, then just do minus instead. The number of spaces on a centrifuge can alter from centrifuge to centrifuge. So just, if you're concerned, just check with someone. As long as they're sort of directly opposite each other, you'll be fine and they'll be balanced. If you're using just one sample, then fill another sample with just distilled water and put that in to make sure that you have an even number of samples within your centrifuge. You'll know if you've made an issue balancing your centrifuge if you have this really bad grinding whirling noise and it's like the most terrible sound in the world. So for the love of God, just try and avoid it whenever possible. Please make sure that you label your tubes on the cap, otherwise you'll have issues recognizing which is yours. You haven't got a huge amount of space, so using like a little indicator like a triangle or a square or a star is a lot easier than writing your initials. Or even if it's just make the entire cap black, that works as well. The final major piece of equipment that I'm going to teach you about is the spectrophotometer, this bad boy right here. A spectrophotometer measures the amount of light that a solution is absorbing. An easier way to explain absorbance is that this solution of food coloring right here has a really high absorbance because you can barely see through it and it's absorbing a lot of light, hence. Whereas this solution that I made earlier has a lower absorbance because you can see through it slightly more, if that makes any sense. So using a spectrophotometer is really simple. What you need is one of these little curvettes, uh, right here, and they're nice and clear and stuff. And all you're gonna do is you put your solution into these and then into the spectrophotometer. So using a spectrophotometer is actually really simple, but there's a couple of things you need to make sure of first. First off, you need to make sure your spectrophotometer is on, unlike this one, and you need to make sure it's calibrated to the right wavelength of light. So what I mean by that is that different solutions absorb different wavelengths of light depending on what the solution is comprised of. For example, in chemistry, benzene rings absorb visible light, that's why things have color for the most part. There's a bunch of other stuff as well, but that's like a basic thing. I could also be completely lying about that. So, you know, fact check yourself. Don't be like me. Then you need to zero with the correct solution. For the most part, it's just distilled water. Like here, this labeled container of distilled water that I have. What you need to do is fill a curvette that looks like this with the distilled water and push the zero calculate button, whatever it is on your machine. So once you've done that, you're gonna take your solution and insert one milliliter or a thousand microliters uh, into the curvette. Insert the curvette into the spectrophotometer with the little triangle that you've got, put it in sideways. So after that, all you have to do is close the lid and wait for your absorption to stabilize. And it's literally that simple. There's nothing all that complicated about it. Make sure that you only zero once, don't zero in between different solutions, because otherwise you're just gonna confuse yourself and your reading is gonna be inaccurate because you're zeroing at different points, so you have different points to go from. But spectrophotometry is really that easy. Hopefully I've given you a really good run through of all of the basic equipment that you have in a laboratory and the basic things that you need to know to be able to actually use this materials or well, equipment more than materials if you have any questions feel free to leave them down in the comments below and i'll be able to go through them and read them and you know answer them when i can so don't forget to subscribe because i'm going to be writing a lots of different videos on essay production and i can do even more of these if people feel like they need them uh, for example like basic maths and stuff for for stuff i don't know thanks for watching and goodbye